Hi, thanks for joining us. Welcome to Only in Illinois, your weekly recap from Reboot Illinois. I'm Madeline Duback here with Matt Dietrich. And this week, we thought we would uh, give you a bit of a primer on campaign finance and really what looks like money laundering mm -hmm. in Illinois. So um, back after Rod Blagojevich was impeached, um, Pat Quinn, who was then became the governor, uh, put together a reform commission, mm -hmm. and they had a bunch of hearings and developed a whole raft of recommendations, right. only one of which was really ever adopted into law, and that one was significantly changed before it was adopted into law, and it is what rules campaign finance right. in Illinois right now. Mm -hmm. But um, it we just had an, an example that sort of is a great way to explain for people how unlimited millions of dollars yeah. get into the system for candidates within Illinois, not mm -hmm. federal candidates for Congress. Yeah. So we had Leslie Munger mm -hmm. in, the con in the race for comptroller, and her husband loaned her campaign $260,000. $260,000. And right. why did that change everything? That changed everything because in uh, on January 1st, 2011, uh, the first ever campaign limit law in Illinois went into effect. And um, as you may or may not know, that means that you and I can give $5,400 to a candidate. All those limits apply until, until. A, a candidate decides to fund his or her own campaign and when that happens is in a candidate for a statewide office like comptroller if the candidate or a member of his or her immediate family spends two hundred and fifty thousand dollars donates or loans or makes an expenditure on behalf of the campaign mm -hmm. uh, then all campaign contribution limits come off for all parties in that race okay okay so so in the case of Leslie Munger, after her husband made that loan, right. the limits came off. And limits no longer apply. And then what just happened? Then? All right, let's go through and let's go through the timeline. And we're using Leslie Munger here as an just example. Just as an example. Because it just happened and it's such a perfect illustration. Right. But what we're seeing now in this election cycle, and everyone's talking about all the money, is really uh, just a bigger version of what the Democrats have done for years and years and years. Right. So. Anyway, this, is, this was the timeline. It was on, on September 23rd. Leslie Munger's husband, John, loaned $260,000 to her campaign. On September 27th, Richard Uline, who is a businessman and big Republican donor, donated $2 million to Leslie Munger's campaign. And on September 29th, Ken Griffin, the CEO of Citadel, donated three million dollars to Leslie Munger's campaign. Then also on September 29th, the same day that uh, the three million dollars came in, the Munger campaign transferred a million dollars to the Illinois Republican Party. Once that money goes to a party campaign fund, mm -hmm. the party can give it to, anybody, to in anybody in any way they see fit. Right, there is no limit on how much a candidate can give to a political party campaign fund. So and and consequently no limit on what the party can give. Right. Okay. It's a reciprocal thing if you so think about it. So they could then way. take that million dollars and mm -hmm. give it to state representative XYZ. Right. Okay. Now just this week on October 5th, yes, the Munger campaign transferred another 2 million dollars to the Illinois Republican Party. So there's, you had five million come in very quickly, and immediately, and immediately, most of it gets transferred. three million of it was sent to the Illinois Republican Party. Once that money is with the party, the party can give it in any amount it wants to to any political candidate. Um, so the trick is the way this law is written. Right. Find a way to get it into the system, and in this case because the campaign limits are off in the comptroller's race, any huge donor can come in and give 10, 20, 50 million dollars if they want 
to Leslie Munger or Susanna Mendoza, the Democratic comptroller right, her, challenger. Her, cha her challenger. Because it's yes. off for both of them. Mm -hmm. Once And once they get it, they can give it to a political party committee of which each, each side has a handful. Um, and those political parties can freely distribute that money however they want to. There's another way, though, it's, that doesn't have to be a, a self-funding thing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a candidate who, uh, in a statewide race, puts in 250000 of their own money or in a general assembly race puts in 100000 Right. If a, an independent expenditure committee, which we have nicknamed Super, super PACs, PACs. We, we know them more as Super PACs. Right. Let's say you're in a race and uh, let's say I'm in a race against you mm -hmm. and there's a super PAC out there that really doesn't like me. So they start spending money against me. That's my super PAC, Your by the super way. PAC. And once you spend $100,000 against me, all limits are off in our race. And anybody can give us anything. And then we anybody can, can spend step in whatever we want. And, and give us anything we want. And can we in, in any turn... Amount, then can we in turn give and we can that freely, money to someone else too? We can turn that money over to our party because we're limited candidate to candidate. That's limited. But I could give it to my, my party. party and then the party's campaign committee can give it in any amount it wants. Now that's significant because Bruce Rauner has two super PACs. Well, he's he, using all these methods to get right. money around the system, That's right? That's exactly right because he, well, he's the one who really pioneered it because he came in and self-funded in his first campaign right. for governor. And, uh, you know, the uh, New Year's Eve of 20, 2014 to 2015, we After saw... After he won, but before he became right. sworn into office as governor. He saw, we saw another $20 million go into that campaign. Right. He has freely shared that money mm -hmm. with... Uh, with the party. So really, once this money gets in the system, it can go anywhere. And the only trick is getting it in the system. And that's not such a hard thing to do. We already have, what, five legislative races that are... Where they've blown the limits. Blown the limits and are over mm -hmm. a million dollars in right. spending already. And, and for a statewide office, like for governor, you have to spend $250,000 to be considered self-funding. And, you know, I, I guess in 2009 when they passed this law, they didn't anticipate that that would become, you know, commonplace perhaps, but it could very well happen that way. So a couple things we should, we should add to the conversation here. Uh, Leslie Munger's opponent, Democratic Chicago City Clerk Susanna Mendoza, actually uh, referred to this in social media as money laundering. Mm -hmm. But the irony here is that she actually was in the state legislature right. and voted for voted this for campaign finance right. law. In the wake of the Bogoyevich scandal, when the when Quinn put his reform commission together, right. they had a package of campaign reforms that were very stringent. And included in that package of campaign reforms were term limits for the Speaker of the House, the Senate President, and the leaders of the of the minority caucuses, right? And that went nowhere. That sank that went like into a the rock. ash can of history very and, quickly, right? And and they quickly went through and gutted it, and that's how we ended up with this thing that we have today. But clearly, the designers, the architects of that plan, who thought they had figured out a way that okay, we want to continue to be able to as party leaders to give as much money as we possibly can to our candidates, thereby making sure they know that they owe their career to us and they and better not, go our way. And not to their constituents. Exactly. Right. So they designed a system to protect that, but clearly they did not ever anticipate someone like Bruce Rauner coming into office and putting in tens of millions of his own dollars right. into these campaigns. And so the effect of this, as we've alluded to, but to say it more directly, is that this is how both parties now are waging the war yeah. of what are called targeted 
mm -hmm. legislative races. The two dozen or so, three dozen out of 177 statewide that are in play, competitive, where a Republican thinks they might have a really yeah. strong shot against a Democrat or Even vice versa. Even though they're heavily versa. gerrymandered and that's exactly. why they're not very competitive. Not very many of them, no. Mm -hmm. So, there you have it. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of outcry now that, oh, look at all this money that the governor is pouring in, but, you know, for, for years, ye years and years and years, the Democrats. the Democrats always had the lion's share of the money. And so, you know, you know, like you and I have written, we're not crazy about the fact that now what we have are two parties that can control their uh, every candidate and, and kind of cultivate this kind of dependence and obedience. We're not we're not wild about that. But at the same time, you've got to realize the system was put in place by the Democrats in 2009. And now you're dealing with, you know, both sides having a somewhat level playing field. But right. although I think, you know, really you there's think level about, and there's level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next edition of Only in Illinois.